who uh, violated the law, who helped run away slaves. So we're on the other side. Lincoln was on the record saying it's a lie. You have to support it no matter what. He didn't agree with slavery, but uh, you have to uh, back up the law. So this is a battle that was going on since the beginning of our, our history in our country. And uh, before the Constitution was penned, there was a trial in New York, I think it was New York, New Jersey, where somebody, um, a printer, was on trial for a libel against the governor of the state. And it was a pretty heavy penalty. Now, libel, they, they were saying that no matter if you said anything about a public official, it was libel, even if it was true. So they were trying to convict this guy of libel. Even though he was just, you know, rationally uh, chastising the uh, the government, and that was the trial of Peter Zenger. After the, uh, that trial process through, uh, the jury found that uh, again, even though he did break the law, that was written to say you can't say anything bad about a public official, that otherwise it's liable. Even though they broke that law, he uh, the jury found him not guilty. And so, and, and that's that's the root in our system with our, our right of trial by jury in the 5th, 6th, and 7th Amendment to the Constitution, uh, where we're guaranteed the right of trial by jury. Embodied in that concept is that the jury has the power to judge the facts of the case as well as the law. And through our early, early part of the, the 19th century, there's plenty of Supreme Court decisions on that. And with that, Al, can you go to the first Slide up to that. All right, next one. Now here's Jefferson going on record as uh, saying that the trial by jury, he considers that as the only anchor yet devised by man by which a government can be held to the principles of its constitution. Now in that statement, he's saying the jury has the power to nullify unconstitutional law. Next one. And then our, our mission in the, uh, in the uh, Fully Informed Jury Association is to inform Americans about their rights, authority, responsibility when serving as trial jurors. Jurors must know that they have the option and the responsibility to render a verdict on their conscience, on their sense of justice, as well on the merits of the law. This is one of the complaints I have with lawyers. Lawyers, uh, they, they think that their job is to win. That they're, they're taught that their job is to win for their clients. And they're not taught that their job is justice. Well, that is the jury's job, justice. And your conscience. To me, it's one of the greatest gifts that God gave us, is our conscience. And, and that's uh, the idea behind jury nullification. Next one up. So that's saying basically the same thing. Again. So why are juries important? They protect society from dangerous individuals. We all know that. Uh, they protect individuals from unjust prosecutions. We do know that governments can um, get into unjust prosecutions. And even if your political persuasion is left or right, there's examples of both uh, violations. People on the right would disagree with these prosecutions over minor gun issues, where people um, uh, had you know been prosecuted because the barrel of the gun was a little bit too small, or you know they did, they violated some law that violates the Second Amendment. And on the left, you know people that you know believe in using ma uh, marijuana. Uh, so there's instances on both sides where the jury can say, you know what, the law is unjust. Uh, so we have this in in inalienable right to veto bad laws. Uh, and we can't be punished for our hurt. People are afraid. Uh, the judges, unfortunately, today, the judges, they tell the juries, that, and they ask you during the word hurt process, uh, will you take the law as I give it? If you disagree with the law, will you still enforce the law as I give it to you? Now, you go a couple hundred years back, and the discussion even then was, sure, they have the right to judge the law, but we don't have to tell them. So, you know, this sort of perversion happened early on in our system. And uh, you know that uh, another example of jury nullification in America was 
during prohibition. So, you know, they, they, lots of juries refused to convict there, too. And so it's a tool that's been used right along, but at, we've been dumbed down in our society and taught that the opposite. And I've talked to young guys, guys that were, you know, basically valedictorian kind of guys coming out of law school, and they had the concept that they had to, they couldn't judge the law. Well, after talking to them about five minutes, they go, you're right. I mean, how can you, how can we believe that the government can take our conscience away from us and say, you have to vote even if you find the law uh, tyrannical? Next one up. The judge cannot direct a verdict. It's true, and the jury has the power to bring a verdict in in the teeth of both law and facts. This is Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes uh, in uh, United States Supreme Court case uh, in 1920. So he's backing uh, that concept up. And, uh, next one up. So what are your duties as a juror? Go ahead. 